Hey guys, it's Rush Ministry again. Good to see you guys, and uh, so glad to have David Nasser here with us. David, good to have you at Rush 2011, man. Yeah, buddy. Thanks Rush, uh, we had you uh, back three or four years ago, man. We were in Lagrange. We were indoors. Yeah, we were. So now we're, we're outside, and and uh, David Nasser is a great, great speaker. I'm sure everyone out there watching knows David and keeps up with David Nasser Outreach. Um, David, one of the things we'd like to, our viewers would like to know is how did David Nasser get started in preaching? How'd that all come about for yeah. you? Well, I, I became a Christian when I was 18 years old. And uh, the night that I became a Christian, I just remember uh, receiving Christ into my life and honestly just thinking, this, this is too good to keep to myself. Yeah. I, uh, I, had, I, felt, I felt like I had found the cure uh, for the cancer of the heart and I knew a lot of friends who needed that same cure. Absolutely. And so uh, my calling really came with my salvation. I know uh, that uh, uh, I look back on it and I didn't necessarily have this like audible voice from God where yeah. God said thou art called to go and yeah, yeah. put a lapel on your shirt and go or go, go book deals or whatever. I mean for me I just became a Christian and I wanted to see other people who weren't Christians right. become Christians. Well, praise the Lord. And I wanted to use every every bit of influence that I had in my life to, to do that. And so I just, you know, the first, uh, I guess, time I ever uh, presented the gospel was at a Kentucky Fried Chicken where I paid a guy, uh, you know, for his meal. I paid, I remember I paid $4 for this guy's meal and I said, look, I'll buy your meal. He was counting change and he didn't have money for the meal. I said, I'll buy your meal if while you're eating your meal, I get to tell you the speech that I wrote about wow. God. Wow, And then I think the second time I paid for it as well, and the third time was at a uh, FCA, uh, you know, thing. And, yeah. and today, yeah. um, I do the same thing that I did in that Kentucky Fried Chicken, except, you know. On a uh, bigger scale. Maybe on a bigger scale. Sometimes, sure. sometimes at a Starbucks or at another Kentucky Fried Chicken, not, sure. not a, in a bigger scale. And um, I think because I cut my teeth sharing the gospel with people one on one, mm -hmm. God gave mm -hmm. me the ability to learn how to uh, how to be that way even when I'm on stage. Right. And you've right. been there, Mark. Yeah. You know when you're preaching sometimes, and and uh, you'll be in front of a crowd, and you'll get an email later, or you'll talk to somebody, and they'll say it was almost like you were speaking yeah. to me. Yeah. I was way in the back of the room, but it was mm -hmm. almost like it was just the two of us having a mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think I learned how to have conversational cost, you know, uh, discussions, redemptive discussions with yeah. people. And because of that, even today, that's pretty much what I do. I, wow. I treat what I do on stage no differently than what I would do if I wow. was off stage. So if I'm off stage and I'm sitting at a Starbucks, I don't necessarily talk to somebody with three points that start with a P and end with a T-I-O-N. <laughs> yeah. So why would I like break rank and do that yeah. on stage? Just be real and just tell them what's yeah. on your heart. And some people do it that way and that's great. Yeah. But you know, for me, I've just got to be comfortable in my own skin. Sure. And so that's, that's kind of how I got started in ministry. Yeah. And then really great men of God mm -hmm. kind of came into my life and mentored me. Mm -hmm. And they happened to be very influential men that opened a lot of doors yeah. Yeah. for me just by traveling with them and shadowing mm -hmm. them. And uh, uh, from there, it just kind of took off. Now, that being said, David, I, I, I know some of your past and where you came from uh, moving to this country, but who was some great influences in your life that really said, to you and your heart, this is what I'm supposed to do because these guys were so great and just influenced you. Who were they? Yeah, absolutely. When I first became a Christian, I remember uh, there was a guy named Rick Stanley yeah. who, who was Elvis Presley's stepbrother. Yeah, I know, I know. And man, that guy was everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, the church that I became a Christian at, he was the first guest speaker that I heard as a brand new believer. Yeah. And, uh, and then at the end of this one day revival at this church, uh, bro, they announced this is gonna be our speaker for camp. Oh, wow. And I remember all the teenagers just screaming out loud, woo, this was, yeah. this was like they yeah. were excited. And, and I didn't know anything about the guy. I was just impressed with what he had preached that morning. But uh, fast forward about two months later, and uh, I remember the first night of camp, uh, Rick didn't make it to camp. And the youth pastor got up and said, he's not going to be here in person, but we're going to turn the TV on. Oh, wow. And we're going to watch him on TV because he's on Larry King. Oh, really? And Rick was actually on there was an eight-page spread on, in People Magazine about him that week, and mm -hmm. he was on People Magazine. He was on Larry King that night oh, okay. in New York, and that's why he missed the first night oh, of camp. Oh, wow. That's cool. And so, man, the next day, this guy shows up at camp, and, I mean, imagine, this is a guy that we just watched on yeah. <laughs> Larry King the night before. He was a guy that was larger than life mm -hmm, to me, mm -hmm. and he um, he gets out of his car and we all were like, oh, there he is, there's, there's, a, yeah, there's Rick yeah. Stanley, there's a the guy we saw on And it's real easy to tell who he is because he looked yeah. like a movie star anyway. That's right, he looked like straight up, like yeah. you know, he belonged out of Hollywood. <laughs> Long, blonde yeah. hair. Rick Flair kind of thing yeah. going on. Yeah. He always wore t-shirts and this vest and he was just kind of a rebel. 
and uh, kind of looked like a surfer. And, uh, and man, he starts walking with the youth pastor who had picked him up from the airport. Mm -hmm. And they walk right over to the volleyball court. And uh, he says, hey, are you David? And I was already scared and intimidated, yeah. but he just, I said, uh, uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, can you talk to me for a minute? Mm -hmm. And I walked over uh, to the side of the volleyball court, and I thought I was in trouble, you know. And <laughs> he said, hey, son, the whole drive from the airport to coming here, uh, Alan, the youth pastor, was telling me about what God has just done in your oh, life. Oh, wow, man. And he said, hey, if you want to, why don't you go get your stuff out of your dorm, and why don't you come move in with me for the week, and just kind of shack up with me, and we'll hang out. And Man, that began the first time somebody ever who played an itinerant role in the mm -hmm, ministry mm -hmm. just investing into my life. Wow. And I got to hang out with him that week and he we talked a lot about the fact that he was Elvis Presley's stepbrother. Yeah. He was like, you know, you're always gonna have a story to tell mm -hmm. because of coming from Iran and <laughs> yeah, all that. No he doubt. said, here's how you don't ever just hey, here's how you develop a ministry that's bigger than just your story yeah, and yeah. stuff. And that week God just used that as a wow, catalyst that's amazing, in my life. Man. And then past that Rick connected me with guys like Jay Strack and Eventually, I got connected with like Franklin Graham and mm -hmm. these other great men of God mm -hmm. who just kind of walked in and started depositing into my life. And it was never anything that I'd done to deserve. Uh, it was just, uh, you know, that kind of attention. It was just yeah. God just kind of brought this favor yeah. that just began to catapult mm -hmm. these opportunities mm -hmm. in front of me. And, and Rick would, I mean, we'd be at, we'd be at, a, uh, we'd be at the Louisiana Youth Convention or something, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I'd be in the back selling t-shirts for him. And they'd, they'd come out, some guy would come out in the lobby and go, hey, Rick Stanley's asking for you. And I'd walk in the room, 4,000 people or whatever, and uh, Rick would go, come on up here, David. And he'd hand me the microphone and just go talk to everybody. Oh my God. And so he, he started just throw, he, had, he just trusted me. Yeah. Started putting me in front of people. And, well, clearly and, uh, that was God from the get-go. That was totally God because, yeah. because there was no reason that should have been happening outside mm -hmm. of God just, uh, beginning to uh, give me opportunities to log on mm -hmm. some hours That's and nice. just to be around uh, people to learn you know, how influence. to do ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this, uh, in, in that being said, there may be some guys out there that, you know, let's be realistic, they might not be able to, to shadow David Nasser for a weekend or, or move in for a week. And what would you say to that kid that's sitting out there, that young man or young girl that you know, they're just trying to find their way uh, in Christ. Maybe they feel the Lord nudging on them. Maybe they've been saved. Maybe they don't even really know what all that means. But what, what do you say to that kid to just say, as a challenge to him, to just follow in what God's doing? To, yeah. If it's speaking, if it's music, if it's just being a child of God and witnessing to people in KFC. I mean, what do you say to that guy? Sure. Well, I mean, first of all, man, I mean, I know that my story, just kind of telling some of what I just told, mm -hmm. is unusual. Sure. I, in, in one sense, I kind of won the lottery of, mm -hmm. of mentorship. Mm -hmm. But, and I know not everybody might feel like that's happened to them, mm -hmm. but the greatest influencer, the greatest door opener, yeah. the greatest booking agent, yeah, the sure. greatest uh, person that can open doors for me is the same person that's available to anybody who's listening who's wow. in Christ. That's awesome. You know? and so, mm -hmm. Uh, and that's God himself. Yeah. You know, Rick Stanley had nothing mm -hmm. on God. Mm -hmm. And right. everybody who's listening has access to God. The Bible tells us that that as, as the children of God, that we are heirs to mm -hmm. the throne of God, Amen. that we are adopted into the family yeah. of God. And so I, I want to, I just want to be really clear in saying that um, sure, relationships down here, yeah. these horizontal relationships are important. Mm -hmm. But man, if you have that vertical relationship with God, and if you have this, um, this relationship with him, you just be faithful, yeah, yeah. you know, and then let God worry about right. what moment He right. wants to make you famous, That's for right. lack of better terms. And 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 even if that never happens, even if there's not necessarily a calling to go mm -hmm. out and be public with yeah. your faith in front of in front of crowds and crowds of people, um, just walk in the confidence of knowing that you are that child of God, that you are loved by God, that God has commissioned you That's right. for a specific purpose to Amen. a specific people, you know. Um, Sure, tonight, here in a little while, you know, at Rush, I'll, I'll be the guy with a microphone in my hand in front of people, but there'll be people in that audience yeah. that will go and have influence and Absolutely. an opportunity to speak in places that I'll never have That's an opportunity right. for. Right. And so uh, there's certain places that God will send me, mm -hmm. and there's certain places that God will send you, That's the right. person watching. That's right. and, and the places that God will send you, mm -hmm. I don't get to go. Wow. And the influence that you have with your neighbors or the guys on your football team or the, the person in your family at the family reunion, I don't have near the traction with them mm -hmm. nor the trust factor with them, but sure. you do. 
Amen. And, and so just to walk in that confidence and knowing that God has gone before you mm -hmm. and in obedience, you can just do great things there and be effective for him. Amen. Gives Amen. you great confidence. Well, let me say this to you guys, just you're watching, David Nasser, David Nasser Outreach, check him out on the web. He's got a lot of curriculum, a lot of books. He's a great author, great man of God. He's a pastor and he has a great heart for other pastors. And I just encourage you to pray for David's ministry, continue to uh, lift him up. And if you need him in any capacity, you're, you're open and you can be booked to speak at other events. Absolutely, yeah. And so just give him a call. And David, thank you so much, brother. Look forward to seeing you, hearing you tonight. God bless you guys. See you soon.